Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard and boy what a sweet piece of early bebop jazz here I have from 1949 in the name of Fats Navarro. Holy cats, a 49 bebop jazz poster from Harlem in New York City. It's just so great. Let me give you a close-up look here. A little scan-ski. Uh, whoops, hmm, hit a timer while I'm at it. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk a lot more about this design in just a second, but uh, boy, Fats Navarro, you know, he was a total pioneer in the genre, and he died a year later. He passed away in 1950, so it's great to get him on poster, and this 49 from Harlem is a great way to do it. But, you know, I'm just going to jump right to the thing that makes this poster so spectacular, unusual, different, and so forth, and I'm telling you, I, I don't know if you've seen it yet, or if you've seen it in my description, but I'm going to do my best now to show you. I've been collecting posters and music memorabilia for decades. I've never seen this on a concert poster ever, 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 first time ever. Felt or velvet is used in this design. Now, I don't know how much it's going to stand out. See that Fats Navarro banner and his sports jacket and Macbeth the Great? You can tell they're a different, you know, look than the other words, that's because they're in three-dimensional red velvet. Maybe you can really see it here because the 23 has it and the April and 1949 don't. Now maybe if I turn this at an angle you can really get a little bit of an idea of the three-dimensional effect. Can you hopefully make that out? Let's see, maybe, look at that. See the 23, how it stands up in his jacket and Macbeth the Great stand up, but you can't see anything, you know, under the banner with his name because it's not three-dimensional. I think that's coming across pretty well. I think you're getting a pretty good look at that. This is so unprecedented that I just, you know, it, it's great fun to shoot. It's amazing fun to discover, but what do I say? I mean, um, you know, just the, the expense of doing this, what kind of crazy expense was it for the poster printer to do that? I mean, and I guess it was put on with stencil, and, you know, again, it's just like a velvety texture. It's not thick. It's not like shag carpet, but, I mean, it's, def it's definitely three-dimensional. Just crazy. What kind of printing process put it on there? As I said, maybe, maybe a stencil thing or something, but, I mean, holy cats. And then how many could they have made of something like this, you know? I mean, because I just don't know if it was done by hand or not, but, you know, mid-century, you would certainly think so. Um, so what does that top out at, 25 or 50? Or did they make, you know, three or four with velvet and run off a couple hundred regular ones? That's what's fun about collecting really old stuff. It's like history detectives, you know, you just don't know, you can only speculate. And of course, once in a while, perhaps, uh, miraculously hit upon somebody to see this video who knows, either was there at the time or his father ran the print shop or something and can shed a little light, that'd be awesome. But I just can't get past this red velvet. I could do 10 minutes on this red velvet, but I don't want to, you know, overdo it. You can rewind the video and see it as many times as you want. So, uh, I'm just really, I, I just, I'm not speechless very often, but the red felt just leaves me speechless. It's just absolutely fantastic, just wonderful. So, okay, the whole design though, with or without the velvet, is really, velvet is really nice. And see that, and his all-stars. I love the way the all-stars are coming out of his trumpet there. Look at that, that's so cool. So running through them real quickly, no slouches at all, even though they're not pictured. Milt Bags Jackson on Vibes, later to form, of course, or join the Modern, modern Jazz Quartet. Kenny Clark, another bebop pioneer, he was on drums. Curly Russell was on stand-up bass. Walter Bishop Jr. was a bebop pianist. Um, Earl Coleman was the ensemble singer. And Alan Eager was on tenor sax, so what sweet music they must have made together. Interestingly, Alan Eager, pretty interesting guy, he would really go on to some weird and different things. He did some um, documented LSD experimenting with Timothy Leary, the LSD guru, and he even played with uh, Frank Zappa in the 1970s. So, but, uh, you know, there's, I think I've done, it's just uh, such a compelling design, knocks me out. Oh yeah, under the date there, the April 23rd, 1949 sort of steals the show, but see how in mint green it says 10 p.m. until question mark? I mean, boy, if you're a bebop jazz fan, to go back in time and, you know, the thing get ro gets rolling at 10 or probably 10.30 and goes all night probably, right? And then um, the pricing, $1.35 down there for that in advance and $1.50 at the door. And then I love the name of this venue, the Rockland Palace Ballroom. Just sounds so cool. Maybe because the word rock is in it, I don't know. but. 
It just sounds so cool. 155th and 8th, um, that's of course in Harlem, the very northern tip of Harlem, but in Harlem, no doubt about it. Look at this. Even the word reservations has such a nice style to it. This poster just really hits it out of the park, I'll tell you. And uh, speaking of reservations, as discussed with previous uh, Thelonious Monk posters, which were in this stash, you get the names and phone numbers, and in this case, addresses of four different people. And I'm not sure how, how that whole system worked, but uh, that was a way to uh, get things in advance and get into the club. So Now, you know what's funny and interesting? Is look below the green. Look in the white margin at the bottom. Can you see that piece of masking tape there? Yeah, there's a piece of masking tape over the poster printer. And it's. Uh, I'm not going to try to peel that off, that's for sure. Um, I think the masking tape is probably about as old as the poster. It looks really old, so obviously to try to peel it up would tear it off. But... Um, the, the poster almost certainly was made by Prince and Maxwell in New York City because they did the Thelonious Monk posters that I've blogged before and stuff like that. But, you know, as to why it was masking taped over, again, one can surmise and guess and have fun doing so. Was it for business reasons? Like somebody didn't like the fact that, you know, the company was advertising themselves on this poster? Or was it for aesthetic reasons where they felt that it just, you know, took away from the beauty of this, you know, stunning, and I will say unique concert poster. Um, and they just didn't want that tagline on there, they just wanted it to have a green bottom and then a white margin. But again, it would have to be a restoration expert to slowly take off that um, masking tape if somebody wanted it to. But again, I'm pretty sure you would find Prince and Maxwell underneath. So, wow, I hope you really felt my, <laughs> my enthusiasm about this poster. That was an ad lib, I hadn't thought of it ahead of time. But whether it's felt or velvet, it's just awesome piece. Great, you know, great for bebop jazz fans, but also just great for any poster collector. I mean, it's a, uh, it's an amazing piece of um, poster, uh, you know, aesthetic history. And heck, if you've seen it, even if it's a rap artist current day, or if it's 1910 magicians, please let me know if you've seen or know of any other concert posters that use this 3D velvet effect or felt. Okay, catch my breath. Thanks a lot for coming by today. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll catch you next time with something that'll probably be flat 2D like every other poster I've seen in my life. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.